Surprise, guys! Welcome back to another video. Also, happy Easter if you're watching this on Sunday. Let me just take a minute to address the fact that I did not plan on uploading this video as I thought with the Easter weekend and Good Friday and all that good stuff, I wouldn't have time, but a small window of opportunity opened up and I decided to snatch it. So here I am, back on YouTube with all of you guys and you're watching this on Easter Sunday. So hope that you all had an absolutely outstanding day with your family, friends, colleagues, whoever it might've been. So being that Easter is a lovely holiday, I always like to on holidays just remind you guys of how grateful and appreciative I am that you always decide to click on these videos and come back to support the channel. It means the world to me, guys. It truly actually does. So I uh, was all over the place last week. I posted a video on Thursday and said that that would be the last video. And then I posted a video on Friday and said that that would be the last video. And I actually really thought that that would have been the last video, but it's not. This is the last video. And as you guys saw in the beginning of this vlog, there's only four hours remaining for you guys to get your entries for the 2007 LBZ dually that you see behind me, the Daddy Max. Ron Bergen dually is only open for a small other window of time. So just like I grabbed that window of opportunity before, don't miss grabbing your window of opportunity to get your entries to win, well, one of a kind dually that I promise you're gonna look really good in if you win. I'm gonna miss this truck so much. It's kind of getting surreal right now, the fact that well, in just about two weeks time, the winner is gonna be nominated for this thing. And well, that's all gonna be rolled out to you guys. That'll be on the Enthusiast site, first link in the description below, on the Enthusiast Instagram, which is down below, on my Instagram, which is down below, and of course, on our favorite platform ever, which is YouTube. Dead ass though. All right guys, so the plan for today's vlog is actually not with the Daddy Max, it's with the 2015 LML, as we continue to set this truck up to be a really great tow rig. Right now, I actually can't even hook my trailer up to the truck, which, is somewhat of a problem. We do have airbags, which is good because we can compensate for the additional weight that I can't put in the truck right now. So does that give you guys an inclination as to what we'll be doing today? Yeah, we're installing a hitch on it and we have to drill a hole in the bed, which I'm pretty uncomfortable about, but uh, we're gonna get some help, some experience help because me, I, I don't know, I feel like I would maybe mess this up. Wow, stellar weather we're having today. Ah, just cleaned all the trucks again and uh, look what mother nature's doing. Whew, guys, it has been a long day and well, you know what the perfect fix for that is. Uh, Lime Ridge has nice trucks, but they also have great coffee too. So we are hanging out with our good buddy Josh today. Josh is the mechanic at Lime Ridge. You guys have seen him around and he is gonna be helping us. Well, he's really actually gonna be doing most of the work and I'm, I'm basically just gonna supervise. Right, Josh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Josh has done uh, an array of these gooseneck installs. We're gonna go ahead and pull the truck in here and then we will get started. Uh, we don't expect for this to take too long and luckily my truck is pretty clean unlike some of the muddy ones yeah. that you've had here recently. So. Hopefully everything goes well, but first we gotta drink this coffee. So today is, ooh, nice Denali that has one tail light. It's getting another one though. So today is the last day where my bed will be fully intact because, well, we're gonna have to drill a really big hole and then a few other smaller holes into the bed. The bed of this truck is so mint. I don't think I've ever really used this bed for anything other than like soft duty carrying. Is that a thing? Soft duty carrying? I think you guys know what I'm talking about. But uh, yeah, we gotta get this truck set up to become the new tow rig and obviously it's not really doing much for us right now because, well, wait for it. And what I was getting at was, well, the gooseneck is a gooseneck and I don't have a gooseneck hitch. So that's what we're doing today. I'm gonna finish up enjoying my cup of coffee on this kind of somewhat moist Pennsylvania day. And then we'll dig into the details. Cheers. Oh, guys, by the way, this is Josh's Denali. It's really clean. I like it a lot. 11 to 14, they just hold a special place in my heart. We, ladies and gentlemen, are installing what is a B&W hitch. I think you guys probably saw that coming. B&W, pretty much the uh, best gooseneck hitch that you can buy. You didn't want to really sacrifice on quality, especially considering, well, we're gonna be towing a lot of valuable merchandise around. So clearly I haven't even opened these up yet. So this is actually my first gander at the kit as well. Yeah, so I think that's actually a really good point, Josh. Um, so a lot of you guys are probably saying, Jack, do not install the BMW hitch without getting it powder coated before you even install it. And as much as I wanted to do that, I wanted to get this hitch installed. Well, one, because Josh is available and he was willing to lend a hand. Two, I wanted to get it on so that way I could use the trailer if I needed to, which I, I might need to here shortly. Uh, so I had a rig to do that. I like towing around with the Dodge, but it does not have a trailer brake and not utilizing the electric brakes on the trailer hitches is sketchy. And I'm not really about that. I wanna be as safe as possible. So what my plan is here is I'm going to install this stuff with Josh today, and then I'll probably end up taking it off eventually, um, letting the truck go down maybe at the end of the summer and then powder coating this so that way it doesn't rust like crazy because 
What's your experience with these stitches? Have you seen them rust pretty bad? Yeah, like trucks that aren't even rusty, it'll just be like flaking off. And I know, it's crazy. So as much as B&W has an awesome reputation for total fit and finish, their powder coating sucks ass. That's at least what I understand. Yeah. Sweet, so these are the rails that go chassis to chassis. I think frame rail to frame rail. Pretty heavy duty stuff here. Grade eight hardware, which is kind of what you would be hoping for. And then here is the actual receiver plate. And this is the hitch that has the ability to put your ball up or down, depending on whatever's most comfortable. No, I'm just kidding. Depending depending on whatever kind of bed use case you have. Um, so instructions are very important for things like this. So uh, we're gonna read them and play, pay close attention. Oh, no, oh, oh, unless we lose them. Hopefully that'll hold it. Mark the four inch hole location. Let's see here, short bed, less than eight foot long, four and three quarters. You take measure edge of the bed. So you gotta go off from four and three quarters in the middle of the rail. Six, seven, eight. Boom, this rail right here. And you wanna do measure 16 times. Drill one time and one time only. This is the part that has me a little bit nervous. Poor baby. You can always put a bed line if you mess it up. Don't say that, Josh. I have utter confidence in your ability to execute flawlessly. Oh God, it's like a root canal. I'm just looking at the instrument and it's gonna be so painful. What did they say, 44 and three quarter? Oh, look at it. So what we wanna drill right into the center of that. Oh God, here it goes. No, that wasn't the... Uh... Hey, there it is. Oh, it's too late to turn around now, boys. Pack up the bags, we're going home. Way less bouncy with those airbags, I'll tell you what. It's the chicken leg dance. Is there a bit sharpened, Captain? Yeah. Oh, we're almost there. You can see through some parts. Let's kick it out. Nope. My kick method did not work, Josh. Oh, the power! You're getting close. Crispy. That's probably hot as hell. Yeah. Dang. That bit is toast. We got a hole in our bed, boys. So the next thing that we got to do here, guys, is we have to basically finagle the frame cross member brackets, those two things right there through the passenger side. And unfortunately, these things just require some trimming and cutting. It's kind of unavoidable. Um, failing at my job. I've never seen the light of day before. That's what happens when you uh, don't mud your truck like everybody on YouTube wants you to yeah. do. You can actually keep things nice. Surprising. So we have to cut out a small, it's like a section, boom, boom, boom. To basically fit those brackets in because there's not enough clearance between the frame rail and the bottom of the bed. Have a good night, buddy. Right here. Okay. Two inches, cut line. So two inch wide, three quarter inch high. Nicely done, dude. That was all by hand too, huh, buddy? Must have done this like once or seven times before. All right, hold the heat shield out. And now we are finagling. All right, that one's in. I'll grab the other one, right? Because that goes in front. Would you guys imagine that I watched a YouTube video before we did this just so I was somewhat aware what the process was and uh, that way I wasn't just like an anchor for Josh. Directions! And then twist it and then put that in. Oh, did they put this in first? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we're making progress. There's one bolt that is right up above the gas tank that is a little bit challenging. It's definitely a two-man job. So if you're ever going to attempt this, always have a partner uh, that you can depend on and that takes commands well. In this instance, since me. Josh is down here right now. Uh, he is about to take this other lateral brace and actually turn it on its side. There it goes. You can see where the hole is. There's the one front side of the hitch. There's the back side. So I'm probably gonna have to get back up in the bed, Josh, and hold it up for you. All right, and we're back. All right, um, oh, we got flying instructions. It's gonna have to come back a little bit. Back into the passenger side. Yeah, I mean, you're talking like, I'm talking like a half an inch. Yeah, a little more. Uh, all right, good. Now, up oh, too much. <laughs> there we go. All right, we're up. Yeah, it's, it wants to stay. That's good. So even though we're being really careful about trying to maneuver this really heavy piece of metal up into the truck, you can see that already this powder coating is flaking off. Uh, so unfortunately, we're gonna need a date with a powder coater sooner rather than later, but this is just gonna have to do for the time being. It's kind of a bummer. I hate seeing oh, that. Wow. I mean, look at that. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, this is the best kit that you can buy. That's the shitty part is the coating is just terrible. And they do this like awful gray color. I don't know why the hell they decide to do gray. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, okay, I get that they want to brand their hitch so that way you can see it when you look, but gray out of all, I don't know. 
I'm complaining, I'm sorry. Dude, I could almost swear two of them are threaded and two of them aren't. There's one that's gonna be threaded and one that's not gonna be threaded. Oh, on yeah, this one's threaded for this. Yeah. And this one's not. I thought you meant that one's threaded. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, I got it, got it. Right there, yeah. So that's where I just kind of wanted to take a minute after we're kind of stumbling through and trying to figure out how to do these goosenecks is aftermarket is okay, but it's never really what I prefer. Now, I believe Dodge offers some sort of like a bed integration from the factory where it's already all pre-drilled and you know, it's like you, you get it when it's brand new. I love that idea. And I'm really hoping that on the 2020 Denali, it's gonna have the ability to option in a gooseneck from the factory. I know that sometimes you can option in a fifth wheel, kind of the mounting brackets. There's like four mounting brackets around, but I don't believe in, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe from the factory on these trucks, you could actually go out and get a factory gooseneck, which kind of sucks in instances like this. And now I know it's not like the most popular thing. Obviously that's why they equip these heavy duty trucks with bumper poles and all of that. But having to go through all this, having to cut, having to finagle, having to quite literally bust knuckles, having to alter all of that of what's kind of stock, it kind of sucks a little bit. I'm not going to lie. And I mean, really, am I the biggest fan of having to do these? Not really, not really at all, as a matter of fact, because I mean, just like the powder coating, that thing really bothers me. And the fact that you have to drill a hole in the bed, that bothers me. There's a lot of room for error. Now, luckily, Josh, Josh is handling it and he knows what he's doing, but I'd say for the average guy, I don't know if you'd really want to get your hands dirty with something like that. So hopefully on the 2020, it is an option to option in. An option to option in with an option for the gooseneck option. Yeah, yeah. To be honest, fishing these things into the frame rails is a total P-I-T-A. You guys can diagnose that acronym with uh, your imagination. A scale of one to 10, how easy would you rate fishing those bolts through the frame? Um. Be honest. Uh, maybe there's tougher stuff I've done, but it's weird. I've never had any issues with that before, but I've only done them on new GMCs mm. and then older trucks. It's maybe not so much difficult, but definitely uh, a 10 pain. in the terms of pain in the ass. Yeah. Yeah. So we do have them through now, luckily, and that's kind of what the result looks like on the passenger side, at least. So uh, making progress. These are the little things that you have to deal with. This one, the short one here is for the front bolt. And then this longer one is for the rear bolt. And they come with these kind of pre like mandrel bends. You almost have to bend them some more to get the right angles when you're fishing this awkwardly up and through the frame. Kind of uh, kind of interesting. Yeah, it's kind of weird. After our hiccup on the other side, this side went a little bit easier. And well, that's probably because we were trying to fish the front <laughs> bolt through the back when there's actually an opening right there. It was the right one that there. said there wasn't an opening. It was me. Josh, you should not be listening to the guy that doesn't know what he's talking <laughs> yeah. about. Maybe we should have read the instructions for this. Once we stopped cutting holes and stuff, we just- We were like, oh yeah, everything's fine. We'll figure it out. So we're pretty much almost homeward bound. A few extra little uh, necessities here. Necessities, essentials. And we also have to put the rings in for the safety chains. We have to drill more holes. Josh, how is it up under there, buddy? Not too bad. Not too bad? The fact that it's lifted makes it a little bit easier to work on at times. Yeah, you're almost sitting straight up and down. Yeah. So we're just installing the pull handle right now for the pin release. So that pulls out and then you move it to the side and your pin for your ball stays in its position and you move it over and we'll spring right in. Now, the one thing that we have to do with that is we have to trim a small little, of course, more trimming. This is the third thing that we have to trim. We have to cut like a little like area out here on the inner fender liner uh, because this hangs down a little bit lower than what you see right now. So of course, we're gonna have to make some adjustments for that. Oh, hello, Jesus. Thunder and I just got shavings all on my neck. Yeah, that's not fun. Now they're gonna poke you for the rest of the night. That is official. Very, very, very nice. Very nice. Very nice. How about them apples? That's pretty cool. I'll step on them for you. And he's gone. The weirdest pleasing sensation on my foot ever. Sweet. All right, it's not often that I get to actually catch perspective of my truck, so I'm gonna let Josh back the truck out. Now it is a little windy outside. What we're gonna do is we are going to actually hook up to the gooseneck, which is sitting right back there for the time being, being that I haven't been able to move it. We actually will have to move a truck too. But before we pull out, I, I really do apologize in advance as well, guys, if any wind reverberation comes through. I try to do my best with the external mic, but can only do so much. There's a final look for you guys at how they look and how it looks. And I think it looks absolutely awesome. Now you can flip that ball upside down too. I don't think everybody knows that here. Yeah, Josh, you want to latch the thing? So latch that, pull that out, and then you can throw this in here. It's like called an upside down hitch. 
And then boom, you can see your pin shoot through the middle and now it's locked. Now they do have this little thing right here so you can pull up on it. Uh, we will be greasing this thing heavily so that way it doesn't rust in there because at times they do and man, they are a nightmare to get out. So let's go uh, Let's go hook this thing up to the gooseneck for the first time, man. We're, we're popping cherries for days right now, my friend. Should probably leave this down. There you go, buddy. Wow, it's windy out. Love those taillights so much. They're just so sick and so clean. It's tight, but it fits. Ooh. Here we go, boys. Oh, we got the white out. <laughs> this is exactly why I bought a white trailer. Straight back, keep coming. Not a foot. A little more, a little more, and stop. Hey, if you hit the uh, cargo light button in the center dash, it'll light everything up. There you go, buddy. I was it wasn't going on. Yeah, they don't turn on until you're in park. Oh. I Moment of truth. I don't know, we'll see. Let there be light. Sweet. Sweet. The trailer actually sits pretty level. I wasn't sure if we were gonna need to adjust the neck on it or not. Um, Cause we do have adjustability because when we picked the ram up, we actually had to move it down just a little bit. But I think that, I don't know, it does seem pretty level. I'm actually okay with that. I think where we are is perfect. You know, I think the Dodges actually sit a little bit higher than the Chevys too. So this thing with a lift kit might actually get it up to where it's used to right now, which is the 5.9. But damn, oh my God, I love it. Wow. So uh, I think the only thing that we're missing right now is the Minimax on the trailer, but being that we don't have the Minimax, we're gonna have to do the next best thing. Truck. Josh, cue the truck. <laughs> it's like it's just gonna fall, but it doesn't. Post Malone, you inspired me, my friend. That whole White Iverson thing, I feel like I do that pretty well too, except not with Bentleys, but rather with Duramaxes. Oh boy. That's nice. It's actually not that bad right now. The bags probably have a little bit of air in them. Yeah, that's actually not bad. I think the, uh, the airbags have a little bit of air in them still, but um, it looks like this is an excuse for us to try them. So you go up? Uh, yeah, it's pretty close to being level, it looks like. Yeah, keep an eye out, ready? Yeah, I would say that's good there. An all-in-one setup. Yeah, so guys, the airbags that I have on the truck, the Firestones, they can go from obviously zero pounds to 100 pounds, and I have no idea how much PSI I just put in them, but definitely sits leveler. Probably going to be kind of stiff, Yeah, I would, I would imagine. So. But I'd rather it be level than squatting and kind of feeling like you have a loose steering wheel and all yeah. that stuff. It's kind of sketchy. Well, I couldn't be any happier with how this looks. My God, it's just, uh, it's like my dream rig come true. Tonight is the first night that we have officially hooked up the gooseneck to the LML. The LML has gone through so much on this channel, being it's kind of really what got everything started. All this chaos that you guys are accustomed to today started with this truck right here. And I think the coolest part about all of it is the fact that it's still here to this day, still probably my favorite truck, Hopefully the Minimax isn't listening right now. To see it towing a trailer that I've dreamt of for the longest time has to be one of the coolest feelings. And it's, it's really, it's really humbling to say the least. It's kind of surreal in a way. I am so stoked about this season and what's to come. I'm really actually feeling how this thing does. If I had all my straps here, Josh, I'd say we'd strap it down and go take it for a test drive. But that's going to have to wait till another night. Dang. Well, guys, I think that's about where I'm going to end this video. Josh, thank you for your assistance. Yep. As always, lending the hand, the expertise over here is so real at LRA. But my like league, I love you guys. Do what you do best. Grab your entries if you're still watching this video on Easter Sunday. If you're not, then look forward to the next giveaway. But we got a lot of announcements that are coming from DDG number two. So stay tuned for that. With that said, my like league, I love you guys. Do what you do best. Tap that subscribe button on your way out. And I'll see you guys in the next up.